Special Operations Forces, SOF, like the nation it serves, is at the threshold crossing of a next era, a new fourth age. In fact, we may have been through and well beyond this crossing for many years now. This new fourth age is one of compound security threats and a character of global geopolitical competition governed by a new and transformative compound security dilemma. SOF's instrumental utility can always be rediscovered in those spaces in between the modern Westphalian constructs of peace and war, and history is illustrative. Reflecting on these spaces in between in the 1990s, we spoke of this sort of utility of force in terms like operations other than war and military operations other than war, all while we were engaged in conflicts and contingencies short of full war, but also not at all at full peace. Today, and about the last five years or so, we have recharacterized such spaces in between uses of force as the stuff of gray zone conflict. However, these spaces in between or gray zones are not new challenges. Labels such as irregular warfare, low intensity conflict, asymmetric warfare, military operations other than war, and small wars have all been employed to describe gray zones in the past, but these phenomena are the rule rather than the exception to the rule. All these labels and frames over the past 30 plus years have also been distractions. The kinds of distractions that can and have blinded us to the real imperatives of the utility and relevancy of force. That being the political object or purpose of using force of any and all kinds in the first place. From our hyper focus on instruments themselves rather than on the point of the tools in the first place. You wouldn't use a contractor's power tools to perform laparoscopic surgery, and you wouldn't use surgical tools to build a house. The challenge for special operations in the compound security environment is to identify where and when on the spectrum from building the house or preventing conflict to performing surgery or appropriate uses of force, when it's time, when is the time most appropriate and required to actually switch to a different set of tools. SOF has the tools to operate along the entire spectrum from left to right. Choosing the right tools at the right time for the right problem is the gray matter requirement of SOF leader professionals. The so-called return of great power competition isn't, at least not in the way we have traditionally thought of it. Again, history is illustrative here. All past returns to great power competition have found a renewed and amplified incidence of so-called small wars and irregular warfare. The utility of SOF has always been a regulating rheostat of competition and conflict, keeping both as indirect, limited, low intensity as possible. Therefore, the utility of SOF and great power competition needs to be about employing special operations in joint interagency, intergovernmental, and multinational configurations, in employment at geostrategic points, ranging the entire continuum of cooperation, competition, and conflict. It is about doing so in ways, and at times, that allow decision makers to both extend the cooperation and competition periods of that continuum, while also lowering the amplitude of international relations in a manner that achieves strategic aims, including the intent to deter conflict and war in the process. The relevant impact of soft utility and great power competition is therefore nothing less than anticipating, finding, and creating ways and opportunities that allow us to do two things simultaneously. First, bend the escalation curve downwards, that is, lowering the amplitude of contestations of force and power and two, extending the spaces in between lost moments of relative peace and that between the next great power war. Throughout the Cold War, this saw full range of operational capacity offered the United States the ability to win without fighting, to not have to resort to armed conflict, the way and means of fulfilling George Kennan's prescriptions of an active containment based national grand strategy. Special operations forces do this, 
and not just on the lower ends of this range of operations, actions, and activities, but continuously throughout. By shaping adversary and partner behavior, both through behavior reinforcement, that is deterring adversaries and assuring partners, as well as behavior modification, or in other words, compelling adversaries and inducing partner cooperation. It is therefore essential that we reappreciate SOFT's utility in great power competition in its more fundamental meanings and implications, that is, in the larger context of the full spectrum or range of international relations. War as a policy activity on a political continuum of cooperative, competitive, and conflictual discourse by other means. Again, it is within this larger geopolitical context where the meanings of soft utility and great power competition must be searched for and will be refound. Again, these special operations other than or short of war have always been about applications of force, both lethal and non-lethal, direct and indirect, at the nexes of all things, but pointedly so, human and national security, local, state, national, regional, transnational, transregional, global, between states and non-states, as well as alternatively ordered states and the like. Today, this is occurring amid a compounding of otherwise separate and discrete challenges and opportunities that increasingly tend to converge at certain historically recorded geographic nexes or strategic pivot places and spaces and that are aimed at the root causal levels of underlying currents and primordial constants of grievances and resource scarcities. In short, SOFT's role in GPC is to help bend and lower the curve of state-on-state -state competition and achieve wins left of the booms. At those once geographic strong points, at the cleavages between the historic heartland and rimlands of the world system where power transitions and competitions have always played out and where all of our great wars have always found their initiating spark. All these spaces and places at the nexes that have during our own times become brittle and once again, most contentious. It is at or proximate to these brittle nexes where we must rethink soft presence, posture, and preparedness. We must rethink them in new comprehensive joint combined readiness terms. And as we do so, we must, during this next cycle of great power competition, what we frankly have failed to do during past ones, and to our collective detriment. This time we must think and move beyond over-militarizing solutions to such challenges which will no doubt require national level and multilateral security decisions both in terms of policy and strategy that enable more flexible authorities and command structures. This includes a strategy of comprehensive deterrence, buttressed by an equally comprehensive joint combined readiness that leverages whole of governments, command structures that are distributed and networked at key nexus points. This kind of strategic mind view and strategic approach has helped preserve the relative peace below the threshold of full or total great power based conflicts and wars. Rediscovering this loss fuller utility of special operations is US SOCOM's number one priority effort. Although the lineage of special operations dates to the work with the Office of Strategic Services in World War II, President Kennedy described the environment that gave rise to special operations forces in his 1962 West Point graduation speech. And he said, this is another type of war, new in its intensity, ancient in its origin. War by guerrillas, subversives, insurgents, assassins. War by ambush instead of by combat, by infiltration instead of aggression. Seeking victory by eroding and exhausting the enemy instead of engaging him. It requires a whole new kind of strategy, a wholly different kind of force, and therefore a new and wholly different kind of military training. So then as it was then, so it is again today, and as it will be tomorrow.